Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we have the brand new Toyota Velfire Hybrid on review with us today and actually I'm quite excited about this review because I haven't driven a MPV in a pretty long while actually uh, there haven't been too many MPVs being released into Singapore uh, Singapore's car market but if ever there was an MPV to review it would be the Velfire, right? because this is kind of like the king of MPVs the king of luxury MPVs so without any further ado let's jump into the review of this car but before we do that if you are a driver in Singapore and you are interested in selling your car for the best price possible or consigning it for the best price possible be sure to check out the link in the description box because we will be able to provide you the best possible code and valuation for your used car it's completely free to inquire so if you're interested please check it out and with that let's start the review all right guys so jumping straight into the review this is the exterior of the new Toyota Velfire Hybrid and although it still retains its large boxy shape there have been some aesthetic upgrades done to the car so that it looks a little bit better now and i think right right from the get-go you can see that the front of the car has been redesigned so what you get and allow me to show you from the side here um the previous valve fires or l fires used to be pretty um pretty boxy even at the front but now the car has been accorded some sort of a bonnet so to speak and uh, i think that generally look, makes the car look a little bit better makes the car look sleeker and honestly makes the car look a little bit more expensive so aside from having a redesign in terms of its uh shape and silhouette i think the overall car looks very smart and very very premium lots of styling lots of chrome very aggressive vents uh they're not real vents by the way um they're they're, they're just uh uh, as some of my journalist colleagues have called it, it's called a washboard design. <laughs> but anyway, um, it does add to the aesthetic. And it does, I think, bring a slightly sportier approach to the Velfire. I think Velfires in the past were just look were, were, were perhaps just a little bit dull, dull, but now I think they look pretty cool. Um, what you get on the wheels, you get 19 inch wheels as standard. And uh, I only just realized that like Michelin now makes Primacy uh, wheels in 19 inches, which is really, really great news. And these are super comfortable, by the way. Um, I've been driving this car for over a weekend and super, super comfortable on these tires. Now, down the side, I think not much has changed here. You still get the same, same general idea of what a Velfire is. In, in fact, if you speak to the uninitiated, they'll probably not be able to tell you the difference from the side. But in any case, some styling bits. You've got a Velfire emblem right here. You've got a hybrid electric vehicle emblem down there. Of course, you get uh, sliding doors. So these are automatic. Very cool, very nice. And inside you get the coolest second row of seats you will find on any car. Because these are just the most comfortable seats ever. Now, further down the rear, you also do get a bit of redesign. So, uh, I think the previous generation had these like bulbous headlights at the side. They sort of protruded out a little bit. These are a little bit sleeker. And there is somewhat of a full length light bar across the back, along with the word Velfire, which never used to appear. It used to just be Toyota. Velfire used to be at the bottom. Uh, now, Velfire is up front and center, which I think is quite cool. I, I quite like it. I think the Velfire name has always been cooler than the L Fart name, anyway. So uh, I think it's really great that they decided to bring it up front and uh, show it off a little bit more. Um, I like the car in white because I think it just looks a little bit more premium, a little bit more expensive. The black ones just look like, uh, as my wife would say, uh, it makes you look like a limousine driver. But uh, if black is your preference, by all means, uh, I, I think the white is pretty cool um, because it does add a bit of different dimension to or it does differentiate itself from other Velfires or Alphas on the road that you see today. Um, but in any case, let's uh, jump back into the cabin of the car because I want to show you what the car looks like on the inside. Alright guys, so... Jumping into the Velfire Hybrid, this is the front cabin or the cockpit. And I must say that compared to previous generations, I think this Velfire Hybrid is a lot nicer than previous generations. There was already a 
significant improvement with the last generation, the predecessor to this car. But I mean, valve fires have been around for a long time. If you and if you include valve fires and L fires into the same picture, then you've got an even longer uh, history, so to speak. And I think when the first or in the earlier versions of the valve fire and a hybrid valve fire and L fire. Um, Although the car was sort of viewed as a you know, luxury MPV, interior fittings were still a little bit iffy. Um, but fast forward to today and you've got a car that I would consider as properly luxurious. <coughs> Starting off, I think what I want to mention is of course the steering wheel because this is something that you touch very, very often and this is something that I feel like the Velfire Hybrid has done quite well with because you've got a nice... Um, leather steering wheel here. It's very nice to the touch with proper stitching here. Uh, you've even got pedal shifters. I don't know what for but uh, <laughs> um, I tried them out the other day. They don't really do much but anyway uh, it's just kind of cool to have you know you can press this but anyway um, it's just a little bit of a cute feature that I think uh, shouldn't really be on the car. But in any case back to the steering wheel you've got this nice wooden inlays which make the entire wheel feel like it's a Lexus steering wheel which um, honestly I believe some of the parts are probably um, interchanged and interused because I feel like this driver uh, this 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 uh, driver display hood cover also feels like something that's taken from a Lexus um, but anyway no complaints because super nice soft touch got a power button up here and then inside what it houses is a full digital driver's display obviously in a car like that um, normally you just leave it in its home screen because honestly what I've found with the Bellfire Hybrid is that you you don't really bother about anything other than driving the car itself you know you're not really bothered about like uh, settings or like uh, special features about um, the drivetrain I think all you really care about is your 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 speed, your your battery uh, state, your range, um, your fuel economy, which, you know, incidentally, uh, because the Velfire is a hybrid now, and from Borneo, it's available only as a hybrid, um, <clears throat> fuel, is a, fuel economy is actually quite decent in this car, or at least decent for a car this size. So, on paper, Toyota says you should do about 17-ish, kilometers per litre which is very very admirable for a car this size because honestly my old F10 doesn't even do this amount so I think um, if you're driving an old Conti car and you're jumping into a car like that you're definitely, definitely gonna feel the difference uh, but in any case I digress um, up front and all around the car you've got JBL speakers so these produce quite uh, a reasonably good sound o obviously these speakers are made to um, they're not they're not really constructed in a way where sound staging is a priority. So, but in terms of um, speaker wattage, you definitely got a good amount. Uh, so, sound comes out clear, strong, good bass, um, and I think it's going to be very. It's definitely a step up from stock uh, stock speakers, so to speak. And then, of course, you've got your center uh, console, which. I feel like it has grown a little bit, which I think is a good thing. It feels very befitting of a car this size. And then we've got a large infotainment unit here. This is touchscreen, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, which is a big plus because in the past, I think it used to be wired. In fact, up to, up to even last year, some of the new Toyotas were still having wired systems. So wireless CarPlay, excellent. Um, you don't really care about how the home interface looks because you're going to put it on CarPlay anyway. And another thing they have inherited from the Lexus is of course these temperature knobs because I think I first saw this on the Lexus NX and I thought they were really, really cool. Um, and now they have appeared in the Velfire Hybrid as well. Hopefully they appear in more Toyotas because I think this is quite a nice touch. I, I really do like the way this looks. Uh, further down the centre console, you've got two USB ports, wireless charger, charging pad. Got some cup holders here two cup holders here you've got one on the passenger side and one on the driver side as well so in total i can easily find four cup holders which is awesome there is a massive massive center bin that that opens both ways pretty cool huh and there are more usb ports here there's a hdmi cable i'm not sure what for but there might be a chance that you're able to pipe 
or to stream certain uh, videos onto the onto the center screen here. Uh, but in any case, this center bin is big enough to completely swallow one tumbler and more actually. I could put like five tumblers in here, uh, so that's pretty cool. All right, and then <clears throat> down here, what you get is of course your drive selector, and I think this drive selector you first saw it on like a, I believe you first saw it on a Sienta. Uh, but in any case, it looks quite nice. I think it looks quite cool. Um, it feels quite well built into the car because it's not really visible from the camera, but underneath the shifter, what you get is this sort of a chrome inlay, which actually feels really, really premium. Um, this is drive by wire, but you, instead of a button, you have to shift in a pattern. So it's a patterned shifter. Park is just a button and parking brake is right here. Of course, you've got eco mode, EV mode, um, EV mode's a bit finicky, you, um, the car often doesn't want to go into EV mode um, because it will say that it doesn't have enough charge but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it, just drive the car as per normal, let it be in hybrid mode, it will kick in when it needs to kick in and it does a pretty good job at that so I wouldn't worry too much about that. On the driver's side here, got loads more buttons, so um, aside from your uh, petrol lid cover, your uh, your AC, that there's an AC on and off here. Um, there's your automatic high beam, I believe. There's also a whole bunch of buttons that control um, the sliding doors, of course. So these are all automatic. You can operate both the sliding doors from the driver's seat without any hassle. You can also operate them from up here. So there's like two sets of buttons that you can operate it from. Um, aside from the doors, you can also operate the side shades, uh, which uh, I'm not sure whether you can see them. But anyway, these are side shades for the windows. Of course, not the driver's one. It's for the passenger. I mean, this is a very passenger-oriented car anyway. So uh, these are all for the passenger. But later on, when we jump into the back, I'll show it. I'll show it to you again. Um, and then what's what's really interesting is that if you have passengers who have reclined their seats and they decide that they're going to jump out of the car without resetting the seats you can actually do it from here as well so you can press the button and then what the seat does is that it will return back into its regular default position which i think is quite cool i'm not sure whether other bell fires have had that feature before but this is pretty nice um speaking about nice um i must say that material use in the bell fire hybrid is actually really really pleasant there is a lot there are a lot of soft touch materials and i feel really luxury it feels really luxurious in here um take away this toyota logo and insert in a lexus logo i i i i'm, I'm gonna venture in a guess and say that it wouldn't feel too out of place uh, but of course the lexus lm which is i mean pardon me but it's essentially a valfire with a lexus logo uh has recently hit the market and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get that, te that that car on test yet, but uh, if we do, we'll definitely share with you that review because I think it'll be interesting to see the comparison between the Valfire Hybrid and the Lexus LM. But before we go too deep into the interior, let's jump into the back, which is of course the business end of a Valfire Hybrid. It's the end that matters. So uh, I'm going to jump into the back and show you what some of the features are because... Um, my kids and my wife absolutely loved the interior and the back seat of the Velfire Hybrid. All right. So I have just jumped into the rear of the Toyota Velfire and uh, as you can see, the rear is SS through sliding doors and you've got sliding doors on both sides. So, in a car park situation where you've got cars parked on both sides, this is actually going to be really convenient as well. So it doesn't really matter that the car is so large. It's still a pretty convenient configuration because after you've managed to squeeze the Velfire through the ramp and into the car park, you don't really have to worry about your kids dinking your car door as well because the doors are sliding um, and I think that's a really huge plus for a car that is this size and in any case it makes 
entering the car so much easier as well because as you can see I'm a pretty large guy and I climbed in pretty easily so that's all very cool um, but I think all that is um, so I digress a little bit so I'm gonna move my seat forward so you can see me and uh, talk you through some of the features that you can find in the back so obviously leg room is abundant no need to talk about that headroom is abundant no need to talk about that as well but what some what are some of the cool features that you have in this car is of course um, you've got aircon vents from the center console but you've also got aircon vents from the top here so you've got a, a very very good amount of air conditioning coming to the rear and I think that's super important in a car like that because in Singapore when it gets pretty hot a car like that has the tendency to get a little bit stuffy so having these aircon vents I think are super important really really helps um, the back passengers feel comfortable and talking about feeling comfortable I think everything in the back here seems to be aimed at making the back passenger feel comfortable and what do I mean? there are quite a number of features here that uh, are customizable to the back separate from the front and one of them is of course your aircon temperature and blower speed in fact you've got uh, blowers so okay so, so the two aircon vents at the back share one blower so you can only control one blower speed uh, but you can choose separate temperature settings so the passenger on the right can have one temperature setting and the passenger on the left can have another temperature setting there is also a option for you to choose a different type of aircon the, the air direction so you've got straight on and then you've got some air vents from the bottom as well although I don't really know where the bottom air vents are um, so we'll leave that as is there's a huge center bin of little storage space here um, not really sure what you would put here feels a bit like a dustbin actually but <laughs> but I suppose you could use it for any other pur purpose um, it's just that the material and the shape of it makes me feel like it's a dustbin um, but you know what, even if it was a dustbin, it would be pretty cool that you have a dustbin in your car because I don't have a dustbin in my car. Uh, there is uh, also some additional storage here. I'm not sure what these are for though, they are pretty small. Uh, you've got some backseat pockets here and perhaps the party piece of the car is this little touchscreen phone-ish tablet that you get embedded into your armrest because this is the device that allows you to control almost anything um, in this like in the back seat so aside from audio settings which I'm not going to turn on right now you like you can turn on your audio settings as well so you can adjust the the volume you can even skip tracks yeah you can skip tracks um, you can adjust the climate from here as well if you don't fancy like you know staring up at at the at the top panel here um, and you will just want to do it in more style you can actually do it through um, this phone tablet so you can choose your temperature your blower speed uh, you can also choose your ventilated seating I forgot to mention both the front seats and the two seats at the back actually have ventilated seats so that's a huge plus huge fan of ventilated seats and then you can also choose your light settings so when you talk about light settings uh, there are different points of illumination around the car so you can actually turn them on and off um, but I'm not a fan of lights so I'm gonna leave it uh, but in any case one thing I really like about the Valfire Hybrid is its ability or its um, or the fact that many many sun shades are included so aside from the roof the roof panel there is also a side sun shade so if I want to bring this up I can bring it down like that and you'll notice that it's stopped in the middle because I've only dragged it about three quarters of the way down so this isn't like an open or close thing it's like you can actually control exactly how much you want so even just a little bit more but not all the way and then all the way very very sensitive to minute adjustments which I think is really cool uh, shows a bit of attention to, to detail and uh, um, makes the car feel a bit more premium so I'm all for this uh, if you're too lazy to use the tablet to open and close the sunshades you can actually do it through here as well 
which probably is a little bit more easy. It is, it's probably easier if you think about it. It's faster. Um, unless, of course, you've already had, you already have this menu selected on your touch screen. But other than that, you know, as a normal human being, you probably just do this. Uh, last but not least, you have seats. You can adjust things on your seats and adjust what you might ask. Uh, of course, you have memory seats all, all, all customized into this uh, tablet. But you've also got massage seats. <laughs> um, I think massage seats are pretty cool. Um, I mean, not on every single car, but on a car like that, where the rear passenger is usually the boss, I think it makes a lot of sense that there are uh, massage seats because this really does help with relaxation. I, I've tried it. There is a there is a um, weekly and hardly configuration. <laughs> I think what they mean is it's a strong and strong and weak. Uh, but in any case, you can choose between them and it offers you a full body massage. Both seats, by the way. Uh, so that is really cool. What else do we have in the back? So, obviously being an MPV, you've got uh, fully reclinable seats. So I'm not going to disappear into a reclined po 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 position because then you can't see me. But uh, basically what happens is that the entire leg rest comes out. I can just show you quickly here. Uh, you do have to wait a while for the motors to kick in. But essentially, you've got a full Ottoman setup which is super comfortable. So, <laughs> most of the time I'm the driver so I don't get to enjoy things like that but you can imagine how a passenger would feel in a car like that. I think it's definitely something to consider if premium levels of luxury is one of your criteria for your rear passengers. Alright, but aside from being a really comfortable car to sit in, um, I've had the car for a weekend now and uh, I must say, the car also feels pretty comfortable to drive. But uh, how exactly is it like to drive? Let's jump back into the driver's seat and find out. Alright guys, up on the roads now in the Toyota Valfire and to get some specifications out of the way this new Valfire Hybrid runs a 2.5 litre hybrid drivetrain so this is a 4 cylinder and uh, this is mated to a CVT transmission um, as we would expect from the generation of or rather this generation of Toyota hybrids so right up front you can tell that this car is prioritizing smoothness and fuel economy as once again we would expect from a family MPV now if you are purchasing this car and expecting to chuck it around a corner obviously that's probably not the wisest thing to do because this is quite a large vehicle but definitely the Valfire Hybrid does its best work when you are cruising along and when you are just driving smoothly along and trying to get your family from point A to point B I think it's quite a rewarding experience because around town when you're moving off the line this car is absolutely smooth in fact it's also very smooth up on the highways but just to talk a little bit about its town driving it's actually easier to drive around town than you would think because despite being quite large you've got quite a good vantage point <coughs> around the car all around the vehicle actually in fact there are these glass panels along the a pillar that really do help with visibility and i realized that even in tighter spaces it's actually quite easy to uh, see your limits and to see where you are so even around tighter car parks i don't really have much of an issue and of course you've got this um, digital rear view mirror which is actually a projected uh, sort of a camera that projects this image into the uh, rear view mirror where your normal rear view mirror might normally be or would normally be and uh, this actually really helps as well because you know it doesn't really matter how many people you have behind or it doesn't really matter if you have any objects um, uh, obstructing the view to the back you've still got a clear view here the only downside is that uh, you can't check your 
check your hair in the mirror when you want to but uh, other than that this makes life quite a little bit easier um, because you don't really have to worry about what's obstructing you at the back and because the car is quite long as well if you had a regular rear view mirror you would probably be seeing quite a lot of the interior space of the car before you even see what's behind you uh, so I think this definitely helps and then if you've got massive side view mirrors as well that really do help with visibility but aside from that I think all those things are quite minor um, the, 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 the drive is something that I think is quite interesting because although this is not a performance car and you know you're not going to derive any sort of driving dynamics from this vehicle I'm actually quite surprised at how this absolutely large vehicle moves around town because I think the hybrid drivetrain does an excellent job when it kicks in and assists the Valfire hybrid in moving off the line so if you are sort of stopped at a junction like about now and you want to move off the line it's actually quite light and breezy and you don't really feel the heft of the car so that's a really really positive thing because I think a car like that in Singapore 50% of the time you're still going to be driving around town so this is pertinent and what's also pertinent is that when trying to move off the line this Valfire Hybrid doesn't have to rev up so much in order to get itself off the line and I think once again that's really really down to the hybrid drive train and how well it complements the petrol engine uh, in fact I think on paper this car does about 247 horsepower and Toyota says that it should get the Valfire Hybrid from 0 to 100 in less than 10 seconds which I absolutely be which, which I absolutely believe I think it might even be a little bit quicker than that because when you do step on it um, you do get quite uh, a positive response from the car of course there is a little bit of a CVD drone uh, which is to be expected but it's nothing too unpleasant and to be honest I think it's a rarity that you're gonna you know really rev the car up anyway because most of the time you're gonna be driving at these sort of speeds you know you're gonna be prioritizing the comfort of your passengers in fact you know I was driving my family around the weekend and uh, uh, one thing that I really kind of discovered was that driving in a car like the Velfire Hybrid you kind of just disappear into your own world you don't really care what's around you uh, typically I'm the kind of driver that gets a little bit irritated on like, like during Saturday traffic so let's say you accelerate you do get a bit of CVT drone but the car moves you know I'm already up to 90 now actually so that was pretty effortless but anyway back to my story um, so I was driving my family around over the weekend and typically I'm the sort of driver that gets pretty annoyed during Saturday evening traffic because nobody seems to care what they do on the road um, but surprisingly in the Valfire Hybrid I just kind of went into this mode where I, I just kind of relaxed enjoyed the drive I was more concerned or I was more happy about the fact that my kid and my wife were absolutely comfortable in the back seats because they, they like they had their feet up it was so comfortable um, after dinner they were almost falling asleep all the way back home um, and, and, and that was a very nice experience and that was all I could care about on the roads and I was just cruising along at a very moderate pace enjoying the super 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 smooth drivetrain of the Valfire Hybrid and in that sense I felt like I was a calmer driver <laughs> which is probably um, probably quite good for you in the long run if you are thinking about your own mental health and your own uh, your own longevity don't get angry so much um, but it, but anyway I just kind of fell into my own world there and I think that's a very very pleasant trait to have in a car and I think it's also quite quite an uncommon trait to have in a car for a car to be big enough spacious enough smooth enough and calm enough to have that effect on the driver I think that is pretty amazing and talking a little bit about the smoothness of the car as well you know when you're cruising up at speed the hybrid drivetrain kind of kicks in intermittently to complement or to support the petrol engine and what you get because you don't experience physical gear shifts in a CVT it's just such a relaxing drive on the road and I, and I must compliment the road manners of the Toyota Velfire as well because as much as this isn't a car that you want to chuck around corners I must say when you're just cruising along the highways 
comfort is definitely one of the plus points of this car because it's so comfortable. Um, it is a little bit comfortable in the bouncy way, you know, in the in the in the typical um, Japanese car way. But it's not a bad thing. The car still has enough heft so you don't bounce all over the place. And uh, I mean, when you're listening to your favorite tracks, uh, in fact, one of the things that my family and I were doing, we were singing along to Westlife. Uh, because that's from my generation and we were singing along to Westlife uh, uh, some of the ballads that that, that, that that we used to love and it was just such a fun experience because nothing around the you know you're not really bothered by like anything else as, as well and uh, as the driver I kind of just drove the car without thinking too much about like optimum gears um, how well the car is responding what RPM am I going I'm not really bothered about any of this in the Bellfire because all you need to know is that it's a nice big car, super comfy, cruises really well, and super smooth, super, super smooth on the highways. And that, guys, I think is really the main point <coughs> of the Velfire Hybrid. And I think if you compare this to previous generations of the Velfire, I think there is definitely a step up here as well, because in terms of the interior fittings, as I showed you earlier, this is definitely quite a bit more dressed up than before. So you combine all these things together and I think it's safe to say or I think it's okay for people to now consider Velfire as a proper, proper luxury car. Because granted, the Velfire Hybrid isn't a cheap car. This thing costs a little bit more than $400,000 here in Singapore. Um, but, you know, if you look around that price point, you're really looking in a segment of you know mid to full size continental luxury SUVs. And while those cars are also very comfortable to drive and to own and to be in, I think in previous generations, there was always a bit of a comparison between the Velfire and these sort of luxury SUVs to say that, you know, hey, yes, this car is really big, really comfortable, really spacious, but interior fittings were a little bit on the cheaper side. But you know what? I think those notions are no longer quite valid because the Velfire Hybrid is properly luxurious in this iteration and I think that's one of the key things that I really like about it. So if you compare the two things or if you compare a luxury continental SUV now versus a Velfire Hybrid today, I think the decision will come down to how much driving dynamics you want to enjoy from the car. Um, and how much you want to have fun with the car because granted the Velfire Hybrid isn't particularly fun in fact it's steering is a little bit vague at times but that's kind of the whole point right because because the steering is kind of vague it also induces a very relaxing drive because your car isn't jutting into corners at every single bit of driver input um, that happens so I think we're no longer comparing the uh, value for money that you get here, so to speak. I think at its price point, the Velfire Hybrid, um, purchasing a Velfire Hybrid is definitely justified. Um, it's just a matter of what sort of driving dynamics you want to enjoy and what sort of overall space you want to have with the car. But in any case, if I've missed out anything about the Velfire Hybrid that you wish to know about, please put your questions in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. And uh, if you have enjoyed this review in any way or found it useful, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because we've got more reviews coming out every single week. New car reviews coming out every single week. And we've also got some road trip videos coming up um, in a very, very short amount of time. But in any case, do subscribe to the channel so that you can join us for those videos as well. Um, before we go, if you are a driver in Singapore and you're thinking about selling your used car for the best price possible or consigning it for the best price possible, be sure to click the link in the description box below because through that link, we'll be able, able to provide you with the best possible price and valuation for your used car. It's free to inquire, so if you're interested, please check it out. And with that, please take care of yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.